I'm going to demonstrate how to do Kirchhoff's loop rule and problems. Uh, these are for multi-loop circuits um, to solve for the currents in each branch, and it utilizes the two uh, rules for Kirchhoff's rules. Uh, the first rule is a conservation of energy rule. It's the sum of all um, voltage rises and drops around a closed loop is zero. Uh, this, is a con this is a restatement of conservation of energy. If um, we're talking about electric potential, if a charge were to move around a loop and end up back at the same uh, spot that it started at, since the electric potential is a conservative um, potential based off of conservative force, then it is independent of the path and therefore the amount of energy that the electron or charge is boosted up, it will then fall back down through that same potential to get back to the original potential that it started with, conservation of energy. The second rule is based off of the conservation of charge, the sum of all currents uh, entering or leaving a junction is zero. And in this case, we treat um, currents in um, to the junction as positive, and we treat currents out of the junction as a uh, negative. So let's see how this would be applied to the classic uh, Kirchhoff's loop rule uh, circuit. Generally, uh, something that looks similar to this is going to be your typical uh, introductory circuit to Kirchhoff's loop and junction rule. Uh, this is a circuit that isn't easily um, solved via the uh, reduction method that we have shown before, where you can um, uh, reduce series and parallel combinations. So let's give some uh, values here. Let's say that this is a 5 volt battery, and this is a 10 volt battery, and we'll do a 10 ohm, a 20 ohm, and a 30 ohm resistor. So we want to find the current in each of these resistances. So uh, the step, first step, we'll call that step 1 is to identify branches. So um, you can see from this circuit that there are two junctions here, and therefore a branch runs from junction to junction. So I'll highlight here with um, some other color here. Let's uh, pick yellow. And I can go from this junction around this way to this junction, and there is a, a segment. That's a series combination of items in that segment. I can also go from this junction around until I get to the next junction, which happens to be the same one. And so there's that segment of the circuit. And then I could also highlight the third segment where I could go down this middle segment. So you'll see that I have a yellow segment, a purple segment, and a green segment. So I can assign to each of those segments a current. So step two. I just changed to black, but I'm not going to worry about it. Step two, assign <laughs> currents to branches. So I go ahead and draw a current that applies to each branch. I don't think too much about which direction I'm drawing my arrow. I'm going to call that one I1. I'm going to call this one I2. And I'm going to call this one I3. And I don't care whether I'm going with the battery or against the battery. I just pick a direction. No reason to spend time here picking which direction you think the current is correct and which way you think that, you know, um, trying to worry about which way the current is really going. When you finish solving the problem, you'll either get positive or negative values for your current to tell you whether your drawing of your arrow was correct or not. As long as you're consistent in solving the problem with the arrows that you drew, you will, um, you will arrive at the correct solution. So it's about pick some directions, get your currents labeled, and then apply the rules. So step three 
after I have my uh, my currents drawn is to write down n minus one loop equations. Okay, so n minus one means how many loops are there total? Well, it turns out that there's a there's loop one which is this left-hand loop, if I were to go all the way around this loop like that, that would be loop one. I can do the same thing with the right-hand loop, and I could do a third loop, which is loop three, which is the whole circuit. So I could go, I could start at this lower point, I could go all the way around and end up back where I started. So I have a total of, in this particular circuit, I have three loops available. Some circuits will have three, some will have four, some will have five, some six, etc. And therefore, when I have three loops, I can write three minus one, or I could write two loop equations. If I try to write three loop equations, one of the equations is what's called a linear combination of the other two. In other words, it provides no additional information. You know when you have three variables, you need an equation with, you need three equations to solve for those three variables. Uh, if you have two equations with three unknowns, you can always combine the two equations together to form a third equation, but it doesn't help you solve for the three unknowns. It's known as a linear combination of the original equations. So that's what happens in this case. When I have, when I have three loops, I can write two loop equations. So I'm going to write down n minus one loop equations. And then step four is to write one junction equation. And I'll show you how to do both of those things here in a minute. OK, so let's go ahead and apply step three for my n minus one equations. And I cleaned up my diagram there a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and write down for the left-hand loop. And so I need to pick a starting point. So I'm going to start down here in the bottom left-hand corner, and I'm going to go around this loop clockwise, and I'm going to add up all of the voltage rises and drops. So I begin traveling up this left-hand side, and I get to the lower side of the battery, and I go from the low side of the battery to the high side of the battery. So um, I would get a plus 5 volt um, voltage change as I get to the high side of the battery. Now I travel along this wire, uh, as I travel along that wire, I'm traveling along a perfect wire, so it's an equipotential surface, so no voltage changes. I get to this resistor, and as we pass through a resistor, we're going to get a voltage drop or rise, depending on whether we pass through in the direction of the current flowing or against the direction of the current flowing. In this case, I'm going with the direction I1. You'll see that I1 is to the right in this diagram at the top of the loop. So I'm going to get a voltage drop because I'm going through in the direction of the current. So this would be I1 times 10 ohms as my voltage change because that comes from V equals IR. I'm now going to go down the purple segment. So I, again, I'm going in the direction of I2. So I would get minus I2 times 30 ohms. And now I get back down here and I go across the bottom. I get back to where I started. So when I get back to where I started, it adds up to zero. That's loop one. Okay, I'm going to do loop two. So in my case, I think I'll do the right-hand loop, which has got the green and the purple together. So i got to pick a place to start. So I'm going to start down here in the bottom right-hand corner. And I'm going to go ahead and go across the bottom of my loop. No, no voltage changes. Now I'm going to go against I2 through the 30 ohm. So since I'm going against the current, I actually have a voltage rise instead of a drop. So this would be I2 times 30 ohms. Now I'm going to go with the direction. I'm going to cross the top now. So I'm going to go with the direction of I3. So that's minus I3 times 20 ohms. And now I get to this battery. And now I need to go from the top side of the battery to the bottom side of the battery. I'm going opposite from the high side to the low side. So that's a voltage drop. So this would be minus 10 volts. And now I get back to the dot where I started, and that equals 0. So I have now done step 3. I've actually done step 1 and step 2. So I finished step 3. I've written n minus 1 loop equations. Now I need to write one junction equation. 
So I have two different junctions I can choose from. I can choose the top junction and the bottom junction. I think I'll choose the top junction here. So when I do that, I think in terms of currents coming in as positive and currents going out as negative. So I have plus I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals zero. So I have written down one junction equation. So I'm done with that step. Final step, step five. Uh, do the algebra. I.e. solve. Solve for your currents. Well, here we have three currents. We have I1, I2, and I3, and we have three equations. So we should be able to solve for our three unknowns. Your technique of favor could be elimination. Your technique uh, of preference could be substitution. Whatever it is, you have to do the algebra. So in this case, uh, I can eliminate I2 from the first two equations if I did addition subtraction of the two equations. And then I could substitute. Generally, my technique of favor is to substitute. So I'm going to pause here and I'm going to do a little bit of algebra. OK, I did a bunch of algebra offline here. You'll see that I took um, this third equation and uh, solved for I1. I eliminated I1 from the first equation to generate this top equation here. So I have two equations, one, two. Uh, I then used um, the addition subtraction method to eliminate I3 from this equation by multiplying through and changing signs and adding and all the techniques that you know from algebra. And I get I2 is equal to two-fifths of an amp. Back substitute into the second equation here, which allows me to get I3, which is three halves of an amp, which then I back substitute into the I1 is equal to I2 plus I3 equation. So once I have these three equations, whoops, kind of um, erased my, obliterated my, uh, my line there. Uh, as soon as I have these three equations completed, I have done the physics. I've applied the physics of the problem. And at that point onward, it is an algebraic solution that I'm seeking. The algebra is important, but the physics is really important. That's where we're using Kirchhoff's rules. So to summarize, when we have a multi-branch circuit that we can't do by reduction method of equivalent resistances, we identify the number of branches, we assign currents to each branch, arbitrarily picking directions, we then identify our total number of loops and write n minus 1 loop equations, we write one junction equation, and then we do the algebra. When we're done, we should have the current in all branches. Sometimes the algebra gets pretty complicated when we have like six loops and we have six equations, but you can always use matrices or other techniques to solve for the individual um, currents in a multi-loop circuit.